Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. So a couple weeks ago, I showed you guys this uh, brown sharp surface plate, 24 by 36 uh, surface plate that I picked up on a eBay buy, uh, not too terribly far from me, made a little road trip to get it. Uh, but anyway, I'm real happy to have this in and, and we're gonna be using this coming up first of the year in uh, December. I'm actually gonna be hosting a hand scraping course being taught by Richard King, uh, Kingway Consultants. He's gonna be coming to my shop and, and actually uh, holding a class on scraping and uh, we needed a good surface plate for that course so I, I picked this up in hopes that we could use it uh, and I think we should be able to it looks like it's in pretty good shape we are going to get this thing uh, inspected and possibly lapped uh, I'm, I'm in the process right now trying to work out the details find someone to do that but one thing that I want to do I'm not real happy with the stand that this is on now this is a factory stand. This is a brown and sharp surface plate and this is a factory brown and sharp stand that it's on. Uh, and the previous owner had put a cabinet in it which is actually pretty nice. The stand itself is, is not bad. But what I don't like about it is the way they've got it, the, the actual surface plate mounted in this. From everything that I've read and everything that I know about surface plates, they're really supposed to be supported by three points up underneath the surface plate. So you have a point about here, here, and here. And those should be adjustable where you can level this in any uh, direction. Now, this does have leveling feet on this, and that's something else I want to replace. I like the leveling feet. The ones that are on here, they just got bolts up in there, small surface pad. It's going to tear up my concrete floor. So I am going to replace those, put some better uh, leveling feet in here. But ideally, you would support the surface plate by three points instead of letting it just sit down on the frame the way it is right now. At least that's my understanding. That's what I, again, what I've always been told. So what I want to do is I want to come and actually get the surface plate off of the stand. We're going to take and do some work to the stand. Um, I want to, while I got it apart, we're going to clean it real good, probably paint it again. I'm not real... You know, this, the paint on here is not terrible, but I'm just not crazy about it. So uh, we're going to probably go ahead and get it cleaned up, repainted. But the main thing I want to do is take care of the two problems I just talked about. The leveling feet on the four corners and then put three leveling screws in here. So what we need to do now is take the plate off. And, um, you know, it's heavy. I don't know how many pounds this thing weighs. I mean, I can, I can kind of pick up one edge. I don't know that I'd want to hold it very long. Even if there was two people, I'm not sure that it would really be enough to safely pick this up. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to actually use a little hoist and pick this up and set it off someplace else for temporarily so that we can work on the base. And uh, I've got a chain fall set up and we're going to go ahead and get set up, go over there and show you that. I right, use my pallet jack. I've repositioned the um, um, whole surface plate, the cabinet, everything over here underneath a uh, chain fall that I've got temporarily mounted in the shop. Uh, long, long term, I really want to get a gantry crane in here, but for right now, uh, one nice thing about having these exposed beams, eight by eight timber up there, you know, this plate's heavy, but it's not that heavy. I'm not a bit concerned with uh, using that uh, to lift up here. So we're just going to come in here and work off of that so go ahead and start lifting this up all right I've got some tension on it now just inspect everything make sure it's just like I want looks good of one side right, I think we're totally here in the base and I should be able to just pull this out right now I've got this rolling cart I'll show you this guys here in a minute I'm actually kind of proud of this cart. I think I'm going to put a piece of plywood under it though just to protect it a little bit. 
Need to come up just a touch more. Yeah, we should be able to come down on that now. All right. So that'll give me a place to put this temporarily. So this uh, base that I got it on, kind of stumbled across this the other day. I walked into our local Lowe's store and I'm in there usually a couple times a week, at least once a week, if not more. And I walked by the hardware store or the hardware section and they had this uh, nice uh, rolling cabinet with uh, the drawers and everything in it, sitting out there with a sale price on it. This thing normally sells for $3.99. They had it marked down to $2.79. So I have no idea what the story is on this cabinet. You know, like I said, I walked by and it was sitting out there. It had the sales sticker on it. It was the only one they had. Um, you know, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I'm in there all the time and I, I look at the, the toolboxes all the time. I've never seen this in the store. Uh, so I don't know if they got shipped this thing by accident and really didn't want to have it and just put it out there and marked it. I really just don't know what the deal was, but $120 off, I couldn't resist, guys. I need storage space out here in the new shop. This thing will be great. But anyway, it should hold this very well. It's, it's rated for 1,200 pounds capacity, uh, which we're well under that on the surface plate for temporary storage on here. So anyway, I thought I'd share my little bargain uh, from Lowe's that I stumbled across the other day. All right, so we got the base out. Uh, that, there's one leveling foot that's really off and I probably ought to just go ahead and fix it, but I'm about to take them all off anyway, so I'm just gonna deal with it for right now. It is driving me a little crazy. Uh, but here's what we're looking at. So ideally, according to um, what I've read on this and what most installation instructions will tell you is, is you want to have again three leveling points up underneath there and they need to be anywhere from a quarter to a fifth of the width from the edge here of course the center wouldn't be in the center on the triangle and then on coming in from this way again a quarter to the fifth of the width now doing some measuring there's two angle irons in here that this thing sits on and they are right in between one quarter and one fifth of the distance. So these are where they need to be, which is good. So it's not gonna require having to rearrange those. Uh, but I do need to come in here and I think what I'll probably do is, is uh, we'll drill some holes in here, oversize. Um, I'm gonna come in from the bottom, weld a nut on there and then we can put a a, a bolt in there that can just go up and down and you can hopefully get up underneath here with a wrench or whatever and adjust them as needed. So to do this, I like this wooden case down here, but I think for right now we're going to take it apart. Uh, it looks like the way they built it, it should come apart without too much trouble. So we're going to go ahead and take all the plywood off and get down to just bare metal and that'll help to cleaning it up. And uh, that way when I'm I, I can get to the bottom to do welding. I can. Uh, I don't have to worry about catching the wood on fire while I'm welding. So we're going to go ahead and, and pull these panels out, I think. And uh, hopefully it won't be too much trouble. So this, uh, these wood pieces are just put on with some screws. There's a nut on the back side. There's a, looks like there's four on each panel. So I'm just putting a wrench on the back. And we're just screwing, zipping them out here. All right, that comes out. And that one comes out. So another thing that's kind of driving me crazy on this uh, surface plate is this green paint. When they painted the base, they just kind of painted the bottom of, the, of the, the, the plate as well. And I just don't like that. It shouldn't be that way. So I put some citrus strip on here and voila.
And I got a couple places I'm gonna have to touch back up with another little dab or two, but uh, that ought to clean up real nice. Well, this was kind of like a jigsaw puzzle, <laughs> but we finally got it all apart. Uh, and it should go back in pretty easily. I may change the design just a little bit, but um, I think we're gonna reuse it. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty well built. Uh, it, it's in pretty good shape, so, uh, and a lot of work went into putting that together. So, uh, don't like the shelves on the one side. I, I may redo the shelves a little bit, but other than that, I think it's, I like it. I brought the base to the surface grinder out to the museum. Uh, I want to do some welding on it and don't have a welder in my home shop yet. So uh, anyway, I got out here. While I've got up on the tailgate and it's right here easy, uh, I went ahead and pulled all the leveling feet out, which were just bolts. And I've ordered some actual leveling feet for this that will have a, a true pad on the bottom. Uh, those haven't come in yet, but I want to go ahead and get these prepped up. So anyway, while I had it apart, I took my angle grinder with a wire wheel. I've just cleaned these up real good. There was a lot of dirt and just stuff all over them. And also I'm taking the time to just run a tap up through these, uh, these nuts that are welded on here that the, uh, leveling screws will go up into. And some of these were really tight. That gum, that does not want to start. There it goes. Some of these were really tight getting the, um, getting the, the bolts out of this one here in particular. So I'm just going to clean these up, chase these threads. And uh, when I get back uh, home, they'll be ready for the leveling feet to go into. I'm also going to go ahead and just put some little short 5 8 inch bolts in the bottom of these. Um, I'm just going to screw them all the way in. Really the only reason I'm doing this is just temporarily. I don't want um, crud and stuff to get up in those threads while I'm working on it or dragging it on the floor and, and mess it up. So uh, these will just kind of be temporary and we'll replace these with the leveling feet later on. I've laid out where I want to put my three holes here. And again, according to the instructions on doing this, you want three points of contact on your surface plate. And basically you want them about anywhere from a quarter to a fifth in from the edges all the way around. Now, um, on my plate, there's some actual pads on the bottom. Most plates have this, and that's just some little protection pads. And I could actually see the marks on here where those, uh, pads were coming in contact with this and what I want to do is I want to bear on those areas and I measured and yeah it's it's right in line with the the one-fourth to one-fifth rule but I'm kind of centered up on those pads that's actually on my plate and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole through this uh, I'm going to use a 5 8 inch bolt uh, as a basically a leveling screw that goes up and down to where you can adjust this three points of contact you can easily adjust it to get your plate level uh, in the shop. So I'm going to start out. I've already marked these. I've already put a center punch in them and we're just going to take a, a hand drill and drill them. I'm going to start out with a 3 8 inch hole and then we'll go up to a 5 8 inch hole. Oh, it's in hammer mode. <laughs> All right, now for the 5 8 hole, I put a little dab of oil on these just to kind of help lubricate it. This is uh, not really a variable speed drill. I wish it was. Um, I don't think it is. I don't see anywhere to vary it. I wish I could slow it down a little bit. I've come in here and just ground off uh, the paint around these holes where I'd have a good area to weld, get good contact uh, with everything. We took a, a bolt. Uh, there's actually a nut on the top and bottom right now. I've got them sandwiched in here, and that's just to keep everything straight, uh, make sure that it's lined up where it's going up and down. Uh, the bottom nut's going to come off. Uh, we could actually leave that in there uh, to uh, jam it on there if we want to. I don't really think it's going to be necessary. Uh, but that's definitely an option. But we're going to weld these on the top. And I could weld them on the bottom, um, but I think I'm going to put them on the top. I, I want to have a, a gap in between the, the base and the stone so I can get a wrench up in here 
and uh, tighten and loosen these up because they're going to have to come in from the sides. And I'm afraid if I did on the bottom that I would just have a hard time getting my hand up in here to make an adjustment. So I'm kind of forcing it to give me some space in there. Um, at least that's my reason. And plus the weight will be going down on the table instead of pushing out. So not that my well would break, but if uh, it did, basically all, everything would be on the weld if it's on the bottom. Here the, the weight is actually going down onto that piece of steel. So we're gonna go ahead and put these uh, in place. Uh, let me turn the welder on and we'll get that done. Well, I'm happy with that. I think just uh, welding them on two sides right there will be plenty strong enough to keep them from turning. Like I said, the weight will be going down onto the table. So um, those are pretty much done. We'll pull the uh, bottom nuts off. Um, the next real modification we got to make though is um, this surface plate was sitting all the way down this frame and you got these four corners where the lip stands up and that's to keep the plate from coming off, you know, shuffling around. So. Now with these uh, stands in here, basically the plate would be above these corners. So I'm gonna have to weld an extension on these. And I'm thinking about probably just putting about an inch and a half of height on it. The, um, I measured the actual step in the stone and I've got a little over two inches, about two and eighth inches from the bottom of the stone up to where the ledge comes out. And uh, you know, right now these, putting these in here is gonna raise me up about an inch, which is about where we are here. I'm gonna go up about an inch and a half. Uh, farther and that should be more than enough to contain the stone and keep it from uh, rotating around. So let me see if I can find some angle iron and uh, we'll get in here and get some pieces cut and get these uh, areas prepped for welding and uh, weld on some extensions. Found me a piece of uh, two inch wide uh, quarter inch thick angle iron and uh, we're just going to cut us four little uh, extension pieces here to weld on to the to the frame. We've got the first one here prepped up and ready to weld and uh, I've come in here and cleaned up everything. We've got a bead out area there where the bead's going to go and I just took some little pieces of metal and clamped them to the back side of this and then clamped it again up here and that's just giving me something to hold it in place to position it so everything's nice and flush like it needs to be and with that uh, I think we're ready to weld this in place. I ended up taking uh, this clamp off up here. It was just, I couldn't get it positioned exactly right. I really got it nice and flush now. So anyway, we're gonna go with it. Should have my welder set. So let's uh, see if we can weld this in. Flip it up. I like welding flat, so we'll flip it up and do the other side, and then I'm going to grind those down flush. Well, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. Um, those look real good. I think once you get some paint on here, it'll be hard to tell they were added on, which is just what I was going after. Uh, and speaking of paint, I think that's next. Uh, I'm going to take this thing and uh, wipe it down with some mineral spirits real good and probably just shoot it with some rattle can paint. I've got some, uh, some paint that I purchased probably about a year and a half ago. It's a uh, Rust-Oleum. It's a darker green than this and it's that um, kind of crinkle uh, finish paint. And I bought it for a project that I was planning on doing and we'll think some things happen. We ended up never doing the project. So I've got that stuff sitting on the shelf and uh, that's what I'm gonna use. Uh, just mainly because I got it. And I like the color, I think it'll be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this wiped down. I think what I'll do is we'll turn it upside down, paint the bottom first, let it dry, flip it back over. We'll paint the top uh, where everybody can see, you know, the part that may be visible. And uh, I think we'll be pretty much done with this. 
So again, what I'm using here, this is a Rust-Oleum hammered and the color is deep green. And uh, it's a good bit darker than what was here, but I actually think I'm gonna like this. I've used this color on some other stuff and I just like the way it looks. Deal. We've got this all painted now. I'm back out at my home shop again and it's pretty much ready to go back together. And the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and put the actual uh, new leveling feet in, uh, into the, the part itself. So these are um, kind of a swivel leveling foot. It's got the 5 8 inch thread on the top, nice rubber pad on the bottom. You know, that's a good, uh, good two inches in diameter on the pads. So these are a rubber, no skid and uh, each one of them will adjust up and down to level. So, uh, you know, we put these little temporary uh, bolts in here while we were painting and what have you. Uh, we're just gonna take those out and uh, I'll get all these new feet put back in. I'll get a wrench and do that. As long as I got this thing up on the sawhorses, uh, we're a little bit easier to work on. I'm gonna go ahead and start reassembling it. And the first thing that goes in is this uh, bottom board and it kind of slides in here like such. And yeah, I think my holes are lining up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all these screws put in place and get them tightened down. I should mention that uh, off camera, I took all these pieces of wood and just hit them with some sandpaper on a random orbital sander just to clean up any rough places and went ahead and painted everything, pre-painted everything. And we'll probably paint it, put another coat of paint on once everything's finished just to make sure we got a good even coat. But I did go ahead and pre-paint uh, both sides of the wood before it wasn't painted on both sides. Um, next piece to go in is the back. If I remember how we took this apart, and it just kind of comes in here. There's some notches cut into it, fit up in here. And well, she's starting to look more like a cabinet again. I uh, got all the, the sides and uh, doors and everything on. Uh, I just put a coat of paint on this. So it's a little bit wet, but uh, I like it. I like it. So I'm gonna let this paint dry. Uh, we'll set this thing down probably tomorrow and uh, hopefully get the stone back on there. The service place cabinet is all back together now. I've got all my wood uh, pieces back on. We got the, the doors back on, everything else. Uh, and again, I, I took two of the shelves out just to have a little bit more room in here. So I got one small shelf at the top and two at the bottom. I do still need to get some uh, hardware to go back in here. The locks that were on here didn't have the keys. They were kind of messed up. Uh, they were open when I got them. Uh, so I just removed them. I got to get some of those uh, probably up to Lowe's or someplace and get some. So uh, let's see, the next thing I need to do here is I got to looking at this and, and the top of this is open and we're going to have the plate, there's going to be a gap in here and basically that's just a place where dust and stuff can get down the cabinet. I wanted to put a cover over this so I went and had a piece of uh, metal, just a metal plate, uh, some what was it, number 10 gauge steel or something like that. It's about an eighth of an inch thick roughly. I had a piece cut and then I drilled three holes where it'll slide down over this and I just painted it. I think it's dry. We're gonna go ahead and drop that in place. And that's basically just a little dust cover uh, to keep trash and stuff from getting inside the cabinet. Let me go grab that and put it on. There we go. So again, I just drilled three holes on here where these will go over. I'm not gonna worry about welding this in place or anything. It's just gonna sit on there. And uh, again, that'll just give me some nice clearance there. And with that, I think we're ready to put the surface plate back on and uh, be done with this. So let's get the camera resituated. We'll go ahead and uh, get this up underneath the, uh, uh, the hoist there. We'll pick it up and then put the new cabinet under. Okay. 
right, let me pull this cabinet out. The new cabinet is on a pallet jack where I can just kind of wheel it right up underneath here. Okay. I think that's it. The last real step here is getting the surface plate level and because it's on the three-point system this is very easy and just for record I, I did level the base with the adjustment screws under I got it fairly level it's probably not perfectly level but the fine tuning is done on the three-point system and you can see I'm a little bit uh, low on this side right now this end needs to come up uh, so I can get up under here with a wrench on these screws and I'll just adjust this bubble. This is a, th there's two screws here and here, so I'm going to level it in this direction first. I, I'm looking at it from the side, and uh, I was, I couldn't see the lines very well. I actually went the wrong way. There at the very end, I went a little too far, but that's pretty level there. I'll do this again when I put this plate where it's going to end up going. And then we'll move the level now this direction and uh, level it across. It's actually pretty close. So it needs to go down ever so slightly. Get to where I can see it. A little bit too far. That's pretty close. All right, so, so that's the leveling process. And again, I'm just kind of doing it right now for your sake. Um, this is going to get moved actually a couple more times before it really gets set where it is. And that's where I'll really fine tune this thing in. I've actually got a uh, master precision level uh, that's accurate to what is it, a uh, half a thousandth or half a half a ten thousandth per foot, I think is what it's accurate to. And I'll probably break that one out when we do our final leveling and like I say, get this thing setting just exactly right where we want it to go. Uh, next step for the surface plate, the cabinet's done. Uh, I'm happy with how this turns out other than putting some locks in here. Um, but one thing I'm a little bit concerned with on this surface plate is that I really just don't know how flat it truly is. I bought this used. You know, I can look at it and say, yeah, it doesn't look that bad. But when you're talking about flatness in millionths of an inch, you can't see that with your naked eye. So, um, I'm gonna actually get this plate calibrated and we'll probably more than likely get it lapped as well to get it down to probably a double A uh, certification for flatness, which is you know a tool room inspection grade. Uh, we're gonna be using this as a reference for doing uh, scraping work. So I want it to be really accurate because this would be the reference that I'll be scraping against. And uh, so, my plan is, is uh, there's a company down in Florida uh, that does this work that we, that's not too terribly far from where I'm at. I've uh, been talking with a uh, viewer of mine who lives in the Gainesville, Florida area, and he's wanting to get a couple of surface plates done. I want to get this one done as well as a, a smaller plate that I have, and then I have another friend that wants to get one about the same size done. We're going to take them all down to his place in Gainesville, Florida, set them up in his shop, and uh, they're going to come to his shop and just do them all at one time because they charge a minimum fee for coming out. Uh, the price for, you know, calibrating it and lapping it, you know, to a double A finish on a two by three plate, you know, it's a little less than $200, which I don't think is terrible. Uh, but there's like a $500 minimum that they charge a, a mileage to travel there and all that. So getting multiples there at one time, it just gets the per unit price down. So like I said, we're going to have five or six plates for them to come do it while at one time. So this plate's going to get hauled down to Gainesville and then brought back up here uh, once that's done. And once that is done, uh, it'll, be, it'll be ready to go. So anyway, here it is. Uh, I'm real happy with how it turned out. Looks much better. Uh, you know, again, I, I put my labels on the front. You know, I kind of just like the looks of those. This one's kind of 
worn. This one, this top label, I said, well, why is the difference in them? This one just kind of worn down. And I got to remember the wooden cover covers this up. So it probably stayed covered up most of the time where this one stayed exposed. Uh, but anyway, I like the way it turned out. I think we made some improvements. We got much better leveling feet on the bottom rather than just bolt sticking out. Nice big footprint with rubber pad. Um, the cabinet's been gone through. Everything's been repainted. Uh, we put the three-point leveling in here. Uh, you know, we raised up the, uh, the edges here to accommodate for the extra height that's in here now. And all in all, I think we've made major improvements to the stand and soon to be to the surface plate. So with that, that'll be a wrap. Uh, thank you guys for watching. As always, leave me a thumbs up if you like what you see. Leave me some comments. Man, I'm getting behind on my comments. You guys are overloading me on comments. Plus, I've been really busy lately, but I'm, I'm going to get to them, guys. I promise. Uh, and um, anyway, we'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks a lot.